Hello. Today, we're going to talk about a little bit about ancient Egypt. So there is, we're not going to make this video super long because there's like 60 slides. So we'll go through about 10 or 15 of them and we'll call it good. Make this video nice and short. So there's some pictures of the some monuments out in Egypt. Uh, Egypt was a land of cultural, ethnic, and racial diversity throughout its 3,000 year history. It has been there a while. Uh, so what is the most important geographic feature for ancient Egypt? It is the Nile River. I don't know what that black screen is there for. I put something there. They didn't want to pop up, I guess. So this is what ancient Egypt looks like nowadays. Um, looks pretty cool, doesn't it? It's got a lot of monuments there. Stuff like that. Uh, you'll have to compare it to the map that I'll show you guys here in a couple more slides. So you got all the all the monuments and stuff. Around 6,000 BC, the first inhabitants began to settle around the Nile River. Around 3,100 BC, the king of Upper Egypt named Mendes united Upper and Lower Egypt. Mendes makes the city of Memphis his capital city, which the capital of Egypt now is Cairo. Cairo. You can see where Memphis is at right now is where Cairo is. And you can see how there's barely any monuments or pyramids around. you still got these. Those have been there for thousands of years. Got the Red Sea. This is the Nile River that flows through here. Uh, pharaohs were gods, different from Mesopotamian civilizations. Kings were representatives of gods. Pharaohs were the center of Egypt's religion, government, and army. You decide. Would Egyptians ever question a pharaoh's decision? What do you think? That would be a question you'll have to think about. Here's hieroglyphics. Former Egyptian writing based on pictural characters of words and sounds. So, for example, they'll... This. They'll, uh, for example, they'll draw like a bird with a little, I don't know, it's like a feeder. They'll call that A. But the bird is the lowercase A, and the feeder looking thing is the uppercase A. And then it looks like you draw a little rat. Or a mice, mouse. That's a period. Uh, the Rosetta Stone carries an inscription in different languages, which helped decipher the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic script. It is the only surviving fragment of larger stone slab recording a decree on the 27th of March, 196 BC. So I was getting close to the time where uh, things were going to be changing. So uh, here's the social class. So the slaves are at the very bottom. Oh, how did that come up? Huh. I guess that's all that. I thought I put more stuff in there. Members of the Mendes family passed the double crown of upper and lower Egypt from father to son to grandson. A series of rulers from single family is called a dynasty. Ancient Egypt would consist of 31 dynasties spanning 2,800 years. So you would have, for example, me, and then it would, it would go from my dad to me and then to my grandson. So I could live, my dad could live for a hundred years. So that means I technically won't take over till I'm like. Like 
75 years old. I mean, it's, it, it's just like that. And then, yeah, so, so how it works. Um, there's some things about the Pharaoh. We'll skip that. The Old Kingdom was a great age of Pyramid Bell in ancient Egypt. The Pharaohs expected to reign forever. Their tombs, pyramids, were more important than their palaces. So basically, a lot of the Egyptians spent their time building their pyramids because they wanted to have a good afterlife. Similar to Shang Wang Ni in uh, China. He built that giant thing because he wanted to have a uh, wanted to have a good afterlife. So here's some pyramids. Blocks from pyramids weighed at least two and a half tons. Some weighed up to 15 tons. Peasants worked on the pyramids in order to be fed during the flood season. About 80 pyramids still stand in the Egyptian desert. So most of these took many years to build. And usually the slaves slash peasants would build them. And some of the guys who were building them would just die from uh, working too hard or they uh, had damaged something that could have injured themselves. And over time it just wore them down and it, they just died from working too hard. Um, so if you didn't work, you didn't get fed. So there's some pyramids in uh, normal times so or in these time frames, 2020, 2021. I don't know, this picture was probably taken a few years back. Um, that's in recent times, it's not back in the BC time frame. So here's how they set up them. You got the kings in the middle, the queens on the bottom, and then you got the passageway up to it. Now, they spent years, they would start building these and designing all these when the king would just take reign. He would be 20 years old and started his reign, and they would start building this for when he died because it would take him that long to get it done. So, and then you got the different uh, stars. Uh, the old kingdom comes to an end. The power of the pharaohs declined. More and more fell the nobles and, and officials. Local rulers struggled among themselves for power. So war tore Egypt apart. So when a disagreement happened, things fell apart. So, that's what happens. Um... So there's a person who died. Uh, so, he, so what happens is, is when a pharaoh king dies, that's usually when the disagreements happen because they reign for so long that then they have to argue over who's going to take over. So that's why a lot of disagreements happen around these times. And people die from illnesses or injuries or from war. Civil war breaks out again. Egypt became prey to outside invaders. Egyptians were ruled by Asian nomads. They ruled from 1640 to 1570 BC. Egyptians despised the less civilized hibiscus. hibiscus. So they did not like them. They were trying to take their land. Uh, so there's them fighting. And it's the different things that they use. They use chariots. Little spikes on the end. That would just. You would drive along. And they would just take out everyone. While you're going. Um, so now. This is a 500 year time. This kingdom was more powerful and wealthier than ever before. King Tutankhamun 
ruled during this time period, the Egyptians became conquerors, a professional armies assembled, which included bowmen, charioteers, and infantry. So it just depended on the king or pharaoh at the time frame. For example, like the president. Some people don't like the president. Some people love the president. And some presidents improve the economy by a ton. So that's why some of these pharaohs really, some pharaohs were really good at improving the country. Some pharaohs and kings were re- made the economy and country go way down. That's when usually wars started. So just depended on the person. Uh, there's some pictures of him in his uh, tomb. They, uh, they really take their burial processes seriously. They, uh, they really do. It's not like nowadays when someone dies in America and you just put them in a uh, casket and then bury them. It's more complicated here in Egypt. still is to this day. There's them extracting some of them. Um, sometimes, some, it's, you, you can't rush in on extracting, uh, old mummies from Egyptian time frames, because if you, they've been underground for so long that the air has changed, so if you open them up and expose them to this air they haven't seen for thousands of years, it could damage them really badly. So that's why you gotta be super careful and be pre- and know what you're gonna do with them. Cause some of the stuff, uh, I'm trying to not try. Sorry, I'm getting off topic. But some of the things in China, like the Emperor of China, the first Emperor of China, some of their stuff they can't even get into because otherwise, it would destroy it if it's exposed to the air nowadays because it's just it's been underground for so long. It hasn't been exposed to air. The air's changed since 4,000 years ago. So, uh, This is King Tut's mummy on mask and on public display in Egypt for the first time since being discovered 85 years ago. Uh, this is a facial reconstruction model of King Tutankhamun made by a French team based on CC scans on the boy's king's boy king's mummy so i'm not i don't know if i'm saying that right but there was a lot of stuff was done back in the day when they did all this stuff they uh several years ago there was a lot of things were found um yeah. Uh, one of two mummified fetuses found in the tomb of King Tutankhamun in 1922 during modern preparations for the DNA test in Cairo, Egypt. So this is uh, one of his things. Uh, it says film. Now it's like the film isn't going to work. Maybe if I could escape here. Yeah, it's not going to work. I, I don't know why these videos aren't working that I may put in here. So there's Queen uh, Hatshepsut declared herself pharaoh around 1478 BC. Her stepson was too young to rule. She ruled for 22 years. She's better known for encouraging trade than waging war. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Hepsifut, I think. I don't know. Uh, but there's a... Uh, mommy of... That's her that's dead. Uh, she was the greatest woman pharaoh who reigned for more than 3,000 years ago. It's kind of amazing how these Egyptian people who buried these people were like very good in and uh, uh, oh 
at preserving them. Like it was, it was amazing how they do it. Um, so I think we'll just stop there for today. We're about 15 minutes. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something. And I will see you on another day. Have a great day, everyone.